Good evening. Good evening, everybody. We are back uh, for another installment of Sandro and the OG. My name is Sandro. Welcome, Mike. Hi, Sandro. How's it going? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Welcome, everybody. We are back on Columbus Day. That's right. That's right. That's right. Kids were off of school. Oh, wait. There's also, um, I'm sorry, there's a second. It's a uh, it indigenous, indigenous people. Uh, indigenous yes. people's day as well so mm -hmm. columbus and indigenous people's day um so the kids were off of school i don't know if the ba if the banks were working or not do you know uh i don't i was i was only at an atm today and that worked fine <laughs> well listen you know so long yeah. as the money keeps coming out right yeah yeah so i'm sure the kids enjoyed the day off even though it wasn't the best day to be doing anything outside it wasn't. All we actually this morning we went to the Danbury Mall. My wife was curious to see whether or not, you know, things were up and running again. And um, so we figured, you know, we had the day. So we took uh, so we took some time to go out and right. check things out. The mall is open, you know. Um, is it crowded today? It wasn't super crowded. Hey, Marty, how are you? Hi, Marty. Um, it wasn't super crowded. Yeah. Um, but there were certainly people there, you know, the food court was open, a lot of mm -hmm. businesses were open, some were closed, uh, some businesses okay. did close down, of course. Um, so it's always tough to see, you know, empty stores in a nice mall like that. Um, but, you know, um, hopefully, you know, we're getting things sort of mm -hmm. back in motion a bit, you know, everybody was wearing masks for the most part, it seemed like people were being you know careful so it's good 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 yeah we okay. uh we were at um in south jersey mm -hmm. visiting with my in-laws we drove down yesterday um they live for those of you who are familiar with new jersey and the garden state parkway exit 58 off the parkway little like little egg harbor and tuckerton um so we went down there and my daughter drove out from the philadelphia suburbs to to be with us yesterday and my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law came by also, and we had our grandson with us. So uh, we had a really nice time. And, uh, you know, to, to be able to have great grandparents that are still alive, it's a pretty, pretty cool thing, I think, for, for a little guy like that. Not that, you know, he's only three, so he may not remember right. you know, when he grows up, but at least they're, you know, they're trying There'll to be, be a, a part of his life. There'll be a picture, you know, oh, there are plenty of, of pictures. yeah, of generations together. That's always, that's always interesting. I was always hopeful that we could make that happen with my son. Um, my yeah. grandfather on my father's side, um, I think passed away just before our son was born. So mm. we weren't able to do that, but um in general hey joan in general uh that's always a cool thing when you can have you know some pictures of four generations in this yes place, right yes. that's incredible that's incredible yes i love that that unfortunately for me that never happened but for my grandson it's happening so that's uh that's great that's excellent. great yeah so uh you know let's let's talk a little bit about what's on the agenda for this evening, right? Yes, we, you know, as, as you know, we've been talking, we started posting information on the uh, upcoming referendum. Uh, we're going to get into that at uh, around 7.30, uh, just to give you all a heads up. We're have, we have a musical guest coming on at the 7.15. Um, I'll have a little discussion about the upcoming weather for the week. Uh, and then uh, we will jump into a, uh, you know, pretty hot topic. Um, yes. And uh, that, that is, that is true. Um, let's preface things by, you know, by saying that, um, we unfortunately don't have, you know, a lot of details as yet because a lot of those details are not available as yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on sort of, um, Establishing a, a general foundation so that, you know, everybody that's watching kind of understands what the process is um, of a citizen initiated uh, referendum. And so we've got, you know, we've done some digging around um, through uh, state resources so we can understand what the process is, et cetera. Uh, we've also, we were lucky enough to have the folks from the Pauling Beat um, help us. They supplied um, 
some questions that you know that have been circulating around the community and they've done their best to provide uh some guidance and some information uh yeah. to address some of those questions so what mike and i have done is we've reviewed those questions and um sort of have uh you know for for time and for flow of the show um sort of uh decided to abridge some of those so that we can right. get that information out to as many folks uh you know as possible Mm -hmm. um again there there is no sort of definitive uh answer or detail uh so we will not be discussing that today but we will share some background information uh that hopefully will start to whet everybody's appetite will provide uh some resource links so that you can all view um the the presentation that was developed um you know from the birch group and it was presented back in august uh, there's also a video that goes along with that. So there's a presentation, there's a video, there's some resource links with language, um, you know, that is provided by the state of New York. So it's the law, right? So you can read it for yourself uh, and you can interpret the law for yourself um, as well. Uh, and these are just sort of things that, you know, that we have come uh, to find in doing some of our research here this week. Um, right. So we figured we would put that out there so that you guys can all click and link through that so you can see um, what's available. Uh, there's also uh, a website that has a lot of case studies uh, of other uh, municipalities that have gone through this consolidation process. Uh, so you can read about those as well and educate uh, yourselves in, you know, with, with that information. Uh, there is a report right that is be an interim report that is being generated and the results of which will be available at the end of this month so that will provide some uh, more guidance um, and a little bit more of the nitty-gritty that that folks mm -hmm. are hungering for uh, but that will be available at the end of the month and and so our plan will be to during this session collect some um, some of the questions that you all might have um, and try to get some additional answers uh, from the appropriate um, resources so that we can address those next week. And then when that report is filed and shared with the community, because it's supposed to be shared with the entire community here, um, we can have a follow-up show um, and hear from you all about um, your thoughts about the, the report, additional questions that may stem from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like this is going to be a topic that we're going to be revisiting over the next couple of weeks. Would you say, Mike? Yeah, um, I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, we are um, neither Sandro nor I are going to yeah. present uh, pros and cons of, of what's okay. happening. We're just uh, and, and forming an opinion. Uh, what we are trying to do is just provide some questions, some answers to those questions. Uh, and then when that interim report comes out, uh, hopefully the end of October, um, it'll, you know, you'll be able to form your own opinion on, on where you want to go. Uh, with and we're the sure that that's going to generate additional questions as well. Um, oh, yeah. It's not going to be a full report. It, and, and, if, and also, too, uh, just to reiterate, um, if people have questions that they want to make comments on on Facebook, they can do that. Um, and neither of us are experts in this field. We consider ourselves uh, town or village of Pauline voters. And, you know, we've done a little bit of research over the last couple of days to prepare for the show. But, um, you know, a lot of the information has been provided by the polling beat, by different websites from the state of New York uh, as well. Um, from the LaBerge Group, as Sandro mentioned, you can watch the uh, LaBerge Group presentation on the town of Pauling's Facebook page. Uh, to get additional information and we're going to provide you with a lot of places where you can go um, right so at, so the end of, at the end of the broadcast what we will do is we will post the links um i right. have one two three four five six six different links that i will post um on on the comment section here and what i'll do is i'll do a pinned post so that it will be the first comment that comes up when you watch this broadcast and you can click through those links and um, you know and see a chart of how the right. process is supposed to flow. Um, there will be you know some pages that talk about 
consolidation. There will be case studies, as I mentioned. We'll have the links to the LaBerge Group presentation as well as um, the video uh, presentation of the meeting that took place back in August uh, 2020. So, and there's a lot of information in that video as well. And so you'll be well served to watch that video to get you know, some pretty good background on there. Uh, and on the, on the links that we're gonna provide, like if you click around there, there is, uh, there is good information that is available generally uh, right. about what consolidation means, uh, what the state provides, et cetera. Um, but again, it is not specific to the town and the village of Pauling. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to kind of bear that in mind, keep that in mind that uh, yeah. every, every town and, uh, and village is different. Um, and they're structured differently. They have, di there are different sizes, uh, there's different layouts, uh, different services, et cetera. And so, you know, and the, we'll, we'll touch upon, you know, what makes Pauling absolutely. unique in this particular case, you know, absolutely. So, once we get to, once we start talking at seven thirty, so right. Um, so, so we wanted. So to you practice, want me? You, yeah, we wanted to practice yeah. all that, and you know, and, and the other thing is, Mike and I have not been involved at all in this process. Uh, we are, um, you know, just. Um, I'm a town resident, uh, a registered voter, um, a taxpayer here. So, you know, I'm approaching it from that perspective, and you know, Mike, I guess you're part. You're in the village, right? Right. Same so, as you, but in the village. Right. Yes. But we're, we haven't been involved at all in uh, in the movement to you know to try to get this done or anything like that. But on November thirtieth, there is going to be a vote, so we wanted to educate ourselves and, and share some of that information with you know with everyone. So, um, uh, with that, I guess we will get to your favorite part of the show, the <laughs> weather. <laughs> Yeah, everybody. This is this is a regular feature. If you're new to Sandro and the other guy, this is a regular feature. I try to provide you with a, a outlook for the week ahead, uh, weather-wise. I am a meteorologist uh, by trade. If you didn't know, already know that, and this will be fun once we get into the winter season. Um, but here we are. Um, you know. The, the, getting into the middle third of the month of October. What we've got, um, you know, most of us got uh, had a lot of rain last night into this morning. Um, that is associated with Delta. That's the remnants of Delta, which uh, will be moving off the coast of Virginia uh, overnight tonight. So it looks like we're going to be getting a little bit more rain tonight. And the back edge of that stuff should be out of here probably by I'd say 11 o'clock or so tomorrow morning. Excuse me for that. Um, and then conditions start to gradually improve during the day on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday looks to be a dry day. Thursday looks to be a dry day. Uh, we have a cold front approaching the area on Friday, probably passing through sometime midday Friday. So we are going to be looking at some showers, rain showers. Uh, and then... Uh, much cooler day Saturday and a beautiful weekend in store. We have had a really nice string of dry Saturdays and Sundays, and that's going to be the case again, albeit a chilly day on Saturday and then warming up again on Sunday. So to kind of get it into a nice cozy little paragraph, um, a little bit of rain tonight into Tuesday morning, uh, some showers Wednesday uh, probably mainly in the afternoon into Wednesday night, otherwise dry. Now, let me hit on the temperatures real quick. I got to look at my little website for that. Uh, forecasting a high of 63 tomorrow, 67 Wednesday, 73 Thursday, 64 Friday, probably only in the 50s, I would say. That'll be the coolest day of the upcoming week on Saturday. And then temperatures moderate to back up into the 60s again on Sunday. And it does not look like there's going to be any significant threat of frost um, this week. Um, if that changes, I'll probably post something on our Facebook page. But right now, it does not look like any significant threat of uh, frost through, uh, through Sunday. So there you have it. All right. Well, very good. Mike, you have been uh, pretty spot on. 
uh, over the course of the of our live stream. So you're pretty good. Yeah, yeah you've, screw done, up. You've, done pretty, you've done pretty well uh, yeah. in terms of uh, the forecast. So thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, you know, <laughs> I kind of plan my weeks around your forecast. So, <laughs> so that's always. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. Was a, a so let me just say that for those of you who, if if you also are new to the show, we have music guests, and um, we're gonna. You know, Sandra will introduce George, I suppose. And we've got a music guest now, and we'll have another music guest uh, later in the show, kind of to break up our, our monotony of talking for a while. Correct? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And and we do, um, you know, we do it. We do this every week. And um, George uh, Malice, who is joining us now. Welcome, George. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing Hi, this week? Good. Good to see y'all. Yes. So we were just about to uh, sing your praises there, George. Uh, Go right ahead. Sing along. Week in and week out, man. Like you're just bringing bringing the talent, baby. It's always yeah. it's always good, you know. It's always a little, you know. You never know exactly what you know what you're gonna get, what angle you're going for, but it's always really cool, really positive. Um, mm -hmm. So we're always uh, we're always pleased with you know with the guests you bring. Thank you. Um, you know, it, we're, we're, we're blessed in a way. Um, you know, when I was doing the songwriters block over there, you know, I just met so many really good singer songwriters, musicians. And um, so we're bringing a lot of them back to do, to do this. So, and tonight we've got, we've got two great guests. We have, I know Sarah Brown is going to kick it off in a few minutes. Um, and then later on is Anthony Gatch. Anthony Gatch is he's cool. He's um, mm -hmm. does a lot of blues and stuff. He, he plays in all sorts of bands. He's uh, he's a kick, a lot of fun. So we got we got two great guests tonight, and um, you're gonna love Sarah. Uh, I yep. just saw Sarah. Sarah was up um, up in my neck of the woods this past Thursday. We were in the studio together. Melody Birdie and I wrote a uh, a duet, and Sarah came up and put her put her part down. And she's also going to do um, a solo on my new album coming up that I, I wrote a song years back for a woman's voice. And Sarah's going to um, she's going to sing that on my album. So uh, and she's a newlywed. She just got married a few weeks ago. Yeah. So she's off the market, everybody. <laughs> yeah, she's off the market. Oh, my God. So, and she's obviously not on her honeymoon either or else she wouldn't be here. <laughs> no, no. I think she canceled her honeymoon so that she could do oh, this show. Oh, yeah, good. With all the money we're paying her to do the show, that must be it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's bring her on, you know. Let's not waste any time here. Hey, Sarah, Hello. welcome. <laughs> she is. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. How are you doing? Good, good. Now, where are you based? Right. Well, we live in Westchester in Mount Kisco. Oh, okay. Actually. So you're not actually too far from Pauling. No, 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 not far at all. <clears throat> oh, very, very cool. So tell us, what have you been doing over the past couple of months? We ask everybody. Um, well, I've been doing, I guess, well, you know what? The last couple of months, it's been kind of, you know, it's felt very slow and very at some points and then sped up very quickly at other points. But um, we, I've been musically, I've been doing kind of focusing more on writing a bit. Um, and preparing to record uh, another album, which I think a lot of people are realizing that now is the time to be focusing on recording, um, especially as the weather gets colder, um, that the, you know, being able to perform in person is gonna be a bit of a challenge um, in the fall and winter. So I'm gonna kind of be focusing on, on recording. And I've also found it really inspiring that a lot of people seem to be now releasing new albums and um, are have kind of, I think, taken this time to to be a bit more introspective and and write. But so creatively, that's kind of what I've been I've been doing. Uh, I haven't I actually I have been performing a little bit with another band that I'm in as well. It's called Monday Best. Um, we've we've done we one and we actually did a gig this past weekend which was really nice i haven't really had many shows live um 
And I also, you know, since we also did get married very recently, we were doing a lot of wedding planning the last the last two months. But um, but yeah, I I'm you know eager to kind of just get into the studio. I'm so honored to be on George's album, and and um, yeah, I'm hopeful that you know when live music comes back, uh, hopefully you know when once we're able to do that again, you know. Um, I'm very excited, eager for that. But in the meantime, I want to kind of focus on recording. Looks like you have an awesome yeah. microphone there. Just saying it's, you, yes. sound, you sound great. <laughs> oh, really oh, good, good. good. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad. Let me yeah. know if it's like feeding back at, or if there's any, you know, <laughs> how it sounds. Sound oh. is, yeah, sounds good. You yeah, sound yeah, is great. Very cool. You sound yeah. is great. And Sarah, tell us a little bit about your first CD that sure. you did. Um, sure. So I released my first CD, um, almost three years ago now um and it was really a collection of songs that i had been i mean really it was about three three or four years worth of songs um i really when i um it, all, all the songs on the album are very very personal very much about um people in my own life and experiences that i've had um, and it's, I, I'm really proud of it. I think it, I, I was very much a newbie, like it was my first album. And so I didn't really know much about how to put an album together. There's definitely things I would change now if I had to do it, but, um, go back and do it, but I'm really, really proud of it. It, I think we put, I worked with, uh, Joe DeGiorgi from Headline Studios. He's now based in Irvington, but, um, we we recorded it and really spent so much time and like really put a lot of thought into all the songs how um how the arrangement would be for every song and it was it was really honestly an incredible experience and i really stand by the way everything is recorded and the arrangement of everything i just am really proud of so that was um it's you know it's kind of like a, a snapshot of what my life was at that at that point um mm -hmm. yeah and so yeah that's but almost that's you. almost how an album <laughs> should, that's 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 really how an album should be because it's a collection mm -hmm. you know and that's what i don't like about music today is uh, you know it's changed people are releasing singles so on and so forth i i love the collection because it does say something about where you were and mm -hmm. where your head was at and what your life was all about in that process mm -hmm. and 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 the years or months that led up to those songs and it really is but you know what we've we've talked so much here now we need to we need to hear yeah. a couple of okay. sarah brown songs because i'm i'm jonesing for some okay. <laughs> okay well um this works oh thanks matt <laughs> this uh this first song i'm gonna play actually is this is for in honor of my my cousin Matt who passed away passed away three years ago, and today is his birthday. It would have been his thirtieth oh, birthday. God. So I wanted to play this song, and I also um, I also just to, and I'll plug this at some point later. But I, I started um, I'm doing a part of a virtual charity fundraiser for the. Um, rare disease that he had had they're trying to find a cure for it's called Friedrich's ataxia so anyway i'll post a link if anyone's interested in don in Good. donating to that um it's called riot ataxia but i'll i'll post a link <laughs> okay so, anyway this song is called matthew <laughs> thought of you it's the first day that i can see your face bright as dawn and you were near or your sun-kissed hair right before me smiling and you had known it all along 
could I ever do you harm? When you were always in my heart, oh, Matthew, you help the world to see so differently now. Won't you stay, oh, Matthew? You are a part of me and each and every single way how i long to see your face again matthew Ooh. I'm listening and I hear your voice in the distant silence and it reminds me of a home by the shore and the ocean waves crashing all around us and you told me I'm not alone How could I ever do you wrong? When you were always in my heart Oh, Matthew You fought so hard and it was time to go And that's okay Oh, Matthew you are a part of me each and every single way. Now I know I see your face again, Matthew. Breathing in the thought of you, it's the first day that I can see your face bright as dawn. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was very moving. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank it's you. beautiful and, and really moving. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. I always get it always gets me a little bit choked up, but um, but anyway, I just thank you for having me on the show tonight. This is really no, we're super psyched to have you. Um, we're actually hoping that you could play us uh, out with a second with a second song, maybe something a little bit more upbeat. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was going to do. So that out. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, tell everybody your website while we we have you up here. Yes. Um. So my website is sarahbrownmusic.com, and it's Sarah with an H and Brown with an E. <laughs> um. So yeah, Sarah Brown Music, and I also have a Facebook page. I'll I'll link everything. Um. But Facebook and Instagram. So <laughs> absolutely. You can just come back to this, you know, to this broadcast and, and drop your links right on here. Uh, okay. you know, if there's a like an iTunes uh, link or you know, SoundCloud or anything, just drop it on there um so that everybody has access to it. Okay. All right. Wonderful. All right. So we'll leave you to it and we'll come back after the song. Okay. Sarah okay. Brown, everybody. It started with a feeling from the
then you had me believing I won't always be on my I've been holding on to winter and you brought the light of summer Didn't know how I could love someone Cada día te seguiré queriendo más Y cada noche te abrazaré y te amo hasta que no pueda más Cada día And I know that you feel it When I'm standing by your side The part of me that's soaring to the sky Whenever I meet your eyes Cada día te seguiré queriendo más Cada noche te abrazaré y te amo hasta que no pueda más Cada día And even when it's late or when I feel like giving up I've never felt so certain oh, that you're the one I want to go through time with Cada día te seguiré queriendo más Cada noche te abrazaré y te amo hasta que no pueda más. Cada día te seguiré queriendo más. Y cada noche te abrazaré y te amo hasta que no pueda más. Cada día. A little Spanish thrown in there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Very good, Sarah. Enjoy it. Thank you. Love Thank it. You. I was speaking directly to Mike Schustack right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't, Sandro. <laughs> well, that was great. Sarah, Thank you. That was really amazing. Thank you so very much. Uh, Thank you. Don't forget to drop us all your info in the comment section so okay. that everybody has access to when it. When does the new album come out? Yep. The new album, well, I, that's, I'm going to say, probably like winter not this one not i would say in the early early 2021 okay, okay. <laughs> yeah Fair enough. Uh, yeah early next year yeah. yeah very good we're looking forward to it okay thank you so much <laughs> thanks sarah, thanks, sarah. <laughs> see you right, soon bye. have a wonderful night you bye. too hey george what thanks, a voice man. huh Oh yeah, she's awesome. Oh man. my God! Now you know why I wanted her to sing on a duet with me. I get it. Oh my gosh! You have an ear for talent. Uh, thank a, you. A, a mutual friend of ours, you know, Jackie. I very uh, well. Is going to. We're going to get you to perform again on on this show one of these one of these Monday nights. So you know, I I absolutely will. I will. Yeah. Um, I just got some new equipment, and I'm putting it together and and getting it going. And I want to be able to, uh, you know, have my sound real good. Good. Can't That's wait the for that too, George. That'll be good. And I know you guys got to, got your hands full tonight, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to be listening in, and you know, I'm going to be keeping score. I'm going to be round by round. I'm going to be giving my, uh, you know. <laughs> Who won the round? Oh, the pressure! Oh, the pressure! Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, Go have a beer or two, George. We'll see you in like at eight fifteen or eight thirty. Is it, Sandro? Twist, twist my arm. Twist my arm, Mike. I'm gonna have it. There you go. Thank you. I'll yeah. see you guys eight fifteen, eight thirty. That sounds good. All right. All right. Good luck. Sounds great. Thank you. See George. you later. Bye. All righty. Bye bye. Hey. All right, everybody. So, I mean, that was some really good music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really amazing how much talent in the Hudson Valley yeah. that most of us have never heard before. And um, George does a great job bringing in local talent, and we're here to support them. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, he's obviously super connected. Um, yes. The music scene, and and so is Jackie. You know, yes. we haven't seen Jackie in in a bit on the show, she, so we're hoping maybe making a comeback. comeback. I think she's going to make a comeback, Sandra. So we'll see. All right, all yeah. right, all right. Well, that I, I'm looking forward to that then, because um, she's all you know, obviously uh, a big part of the station, and she, you know, she was a a big part of the show early, you know, earlier on when we first yes. started. Yeah. Uh, but she's taking a hiatus. Um, mm -hmm. She had a couple of health, you know, she had some health issues, but mm -hmm. she's thankfully getting better. So hopefully we'll be able to bring her back. Yeah. I look All forward right. to that. Yeah. All right. So now we've come, you know, we've come to that, to that time, to that, uh, uh, part of the show where we're going to be talking um, consolidation. Uh, right. You know, we, right. we did our, you know, we, we did start with our provisos earlier on. Um, you know, we're not, we haven't been a part of, um, of any, you know, of any of this um, consolidation effort from any side. Um, you know, we're really coming at it as um, a town resident and in the case of Micah Village resident, you know, taxpayer uh, registered voters, uh, really looking to get some, um, some information uh, that can help us make uh, an informed decision come the 30th mm -hmm. of November. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we thank the Pauling Beat uh, for gathering uh, sort of some, inform you know, some questions that have been floating around uh, in the community through social media. Um, uh, and I guess, you know, during town meetings or, you know, conversations, et cetera. Uh, and what they've done is they've tried to provide um, some, uh, you know, some basic answers, um, you know, to some of those uh, questions that, you know, that folks are, are voicing or are curious about. Uh, to date, we don't have any definitive answers because there isn't a, uh, a full study and analysis that has been done that is yet available. There is an interim analysis that, that's being performed now that will be available at the end of this month, and that will be made available to everyone uh, in both the village and the town. Um, so that will uh, hopefully provide some additional information for everybody. Um, it's not the full uh, report and analysis, but it's something that will give us some, you know, some much needed information um, before the 30th. Yeah. Again, we have the questions and answers that have been provided um, by the, you know, by the Pauline Beat. Uh, mm -hmm. And then that kind of, you know, uh, piqued our interest to look um, into some additional um, information gathering online. Um, and so I have, you know, collected a bunch of uh, websites and links with relevant information pertaining to consolidation and dissolution of, uh, of villages and, and towns so that you can all do some additional research on your own um, and get yourself acquainted with, uh, with this entire process. And, um, okay. Sandro likes to, you go, he, he likes, he's he, very well stated, very well stated, Sandro. Um, any of you uh, people that have questions, um, you can certainly ask questions in, in our comment section. Um, if we cannot answer the questions, we will defer them to another show. We will look into it, try to get information on that. Um, but we do have, I think, a lot of good basic information. Um, you know, we're not going to take a stand pro or con. We're not going to present a pro or con point of view. We're just going to provide information based on uh, questions that we got uh, from the polling beat, which, um, you know, is is about as objective, I think, as we can find. Um, you know, there's a lot of back and forth on Facebook. Everybody knows that. So let's get started. Sandra, before, the, before, yeah, before we jump in, uh, somebody has already asked uh, if there will if they can get a mail in ballot uh, or to vote in person. We don't know that as yet. That communication will be um, forthcoming from village and town, uh, right. and we will actually address that later on as well. Yeah. Um, all right. And okay. So great. Yeah. So let's start by making everybody. Yeah. Like let's clarify. Like what is on the ballot? Um, right okay. on November the thirtieth, Mike. Yeah, the, first of all, uh, the vote is, like Sandra just said, November 30th. Polling places, uh, we're not sure of where the polling places are going to be, but I'm sure that information will come out. Now, it's very, very simple. Um, shall the village of Pauling 
be consolidated with the town of Pauling? Yes or no? Um, nothing about a study. It's just a yes or no vote about consolidation. Simple, simple question. That's the only thing that's going to be on the ballot um, is that. That's the question to the referendum. Um, I mean, I, I could read the petition if you want. Do you think that's worth reading, Sandro? Or uh, no, I'm not sure. I mean, you you articulated okay. what is you know what is it exactly that you know people are voting for, and so one okay. of the things that we talked about that I think uh, maybe we we missed, but before we really dive into it, is maybe to review um, the the process, right? Like this is on the ballot as an elector initiated consolidation. There was a mm -hmm. petition uh, that went around, and so what we you know we did a little bit of. Um, Info digging, and this is also on the Pauling Beat um, web page with you know sort of some additional commentary. But we thought uh, we sort of keep you got it. The, you got the funky one on there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's fine. I, that's fine. I do, but I but I do. Um, one of the links that I'll I'll pin on the comments will have an uh, you know sort of an updated document. There is a, a document with a lot of, with a few pages of verbiage as well as a streamlined process that you're seeing here. The process is the same. Mm -hmm. It's just presented in a slightly different way that makes it uh, look a little bit more streamlined. But it is exactly the same process as you see here uh, with additional information. And so the way that this elector initiated consolidation uh, started was uh, by getting um, you know, citizens to sign a petition. Right. right. And so and then that petition um, uh, called for a referendum and it was submitted um, to, you know, to the village, the clerk, right? yep. to the clerk in the village. It was verified. Um, and then once it was verified, then it moved to a referendum. There was a date that was established for the vote as November the 30th. Uh, and then the vote is simply. Um, whether or not we move to consolidate the village and towns. That's a yes or no, that's it. Uh, it is not about, uh, oh, let's do a survey to find out if that's, if that's a good idea or not. Uh, mm -hmm. It is whether we move forward with that action or not. Um, there is, as we mentioned already, an interim report that is being generated and the results of which will be available on the 30th. Okay. Um, or before, you know, at the end of this month. All right. I'll, I'll, let me just step in here and just kind of continue on the middle section here. Um, if the referendum, or two options could happen. The referendum could, could be voted yes or could be voted no. If the referendum fails, there's a four-year waiting period uh, before another vote is allowed. If the referendum passes, then a, uh, a proposed plan has to be approved that's the village and the town get together and generate a plan. Correct? You good so far? Right. And this you is, you know, they, they will likely um, work with a consulting firm. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's, a, you know, the LaBerge group has been tapped already. They, they've presented um, in August. Um, was it a village um, board meeting where they presented, Mike? Uh, the LaBerge group ap appeared at a joint meeting. At a um, joint meeting. Between and the we will have, board. Yes, we will put the link to the video of that entire meeting in the comment section, as well as a link with their presentation so that you can review that at your leisure as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so they did, you know, come um, and do a little bit of a, uh, some information sharing uh, back in August. So, Mike, please continue. So, if the yeah, vote no, is, a, is affirmative, just, then you know. Yeah, they just, move just, to just to be clear, Sandra, too. I'm 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 using the the other graph. So, I mean, they should be about the same. They are. Um, but I'm just using this other graph that uh, I was sent. So, okay. So, um, referendum passes. Uh, a proposed plan is approved. Then it goes into a hearing, um, and then uh, amendments are made. Um, based on what happened in that hearing. And then it goes up for um, a final plan approval. All right. So you have a final plan approval. Um, 
if that and once that that final plan is approved consolidation occurs if that final um what can happen though at that point is um you would you would need 25 percent of the electorate in the village and town which i'm going to just throw out a number here i believe the combined population is maybe it's it's 9,000, 8,500 or 9,000. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. You would need 25% of the vote uh, to, to, to get another vote to happen, um, to put up another vote to vote it down. So that's, that's as we see the law, that's what uh, this chart is explaining and that's the process involved. I think I got it all. So once a, the plan is uh, is generated, there will be a public hearing on the plan. Right. There may or may not be Amendments. changes on that plan. Yep. Uh, but then once that is sort of put to bed, then either uh, the village and town move to approve it or. Mm -hmm. uh, or yes. Not. And then, and, and then that, at that, that point. OK, so what you're saying is that at that point, um, citizens can also if they're dissatisfied with that plan right this decision can, can be reversed right citizens can um generate a second petition 20, right and that would require 25 percent of the electorate correct uh, to sign that petition to bring it to a vote right. where they could um either vote in the affirmative or um, then you would have a revote in the negative of that, you know, for that particular plan. And then at that point, the whole process would need to start again if mm -hmm. this issue um, um, continues to uh, to merit attention, I suppose. Yeah. So so um, so yeah. Let let, let me um, just say a couple things that you know, you and I had discussed earlier, um, this polling is, is unique in that, um, this is, this is the first time that, it, um, before approval of the village and the town board, um, a petition, uh, driven, um, or a voter referendum petition driven, uh, has happened in New York state. Um, so this, we're kind of unique in, in that way. Um, so just uh, wanted to get that out there. Um, it's never happened before. We're precedent setting. So that's why there's a lot of questions. So we're, we're precedent setting in the sense that it is the first time that it is a citizen or electorate generated referendum without request, board. requesting yeah. this, um, this process to, uh, yep. to take place. Um, but again, on that, on that point, we do have a link. Um, that is going to be made available to everybody. Once we're done with the broadcast, we will post all the links and we'll pin them uh, at the top of the, this broadcast so that you can all review them. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's a whole process that's um, uh, that is outlined uh, for how to go ahead and do that. You know, um, it's a I think it's state sponsored um, website. So it's a state website that you know allows for all this and it really walks everybody through. Mm -hmm. uh, how that takes place. Right, right, okay. right. All right. Now, um, moving on, um, the next question uh, <laughs> that comes up is um, about taxes. Um, you know, combining the village and town, um, what will happen with our taxes? The short answer is nobody knows um, the answer to that question. Um, so, you know, we're just going to leave it at that. We're hoping that the interim report when that comes out that will shed some light on that. Mike, hold um, on a second. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so the question on taxes. Yeah. Where did you jump to? <laughs> okay, I, I I jumped to the uh, third question on the uh, polling beat list. The third question. Correct. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So, right, so is combining the village and town into a smaller new government, will that reduce taxes? Okay, sorry about that, I, I got a Yeah, confused. yeah, so, you know, the answer is, is, is we don't know the answer to that question. Um, well, we know, don't know the extent to, like what impact it will have, but uh, mm -hmm. 
according to the law, right, it says that there is a 15% uh, credit uh, due to, so this is, you know, what we found in the language of the law, um, that right. that's what it says. Now, there are questions about whether or not there is funding available, like, you know, there's budget restrictions and, you know, lots of things that go on. But by law, according to the language of the law, there is that piece that we know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to what extent beyond that, um, that, that is where we, nobody really, nobody really knows any yeah. clarity on any of that as yet. Again, I would hope that that would be part of the, uh, the report, the interim report too, by I think, I think maybe it'll it set up some scenarios. I don't know, if, you know, different if, scenarios. I, I mean, I, I think, and, and if you look at some of the case studies, um, and the reports that have been generated for other, uh, municipalities that have gone through this process, it's pretty extensive. It's a pretty extensive analysis and report that is generated that mm -hmm. looks at a, it looks at a ton of different um, areas, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And so, uh, I can't imagine that we wouldn't be, we would not get that information through the reports that, Correct. Yeah. Know, that are generated. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's that, you know, um, uh, we're not going to get into like, you know, who would have what service. It's all subjective at this point, who wants what, um, who's going to get what. Um, so we're just going to say that the answer is we're not sure. Um, but I would hope those options would be presented to us at some point before right. the referendum vote. You know, we hope. Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, will we know more about what a yes or no vote will mean before we have to vote? Uh, and then there's a, just a little bit of history here that I wanted to touch upon, Sandro. Um, okay. All right. Um, other municipalities have studied consolidation before introducing the actual merge. Um, Pauling is the first case, as I stated before, in New York State of a citizens initiated petition for consolidation, which puts the study after the decision to make to consolidate. That's because the village and the town have not gotten together to agree on a plan yet. Um, and it's the only case of a village and town consolidation in New York State. In all other cases, the villages decided on their own to dissolve into the town. So it's a, again, that's what makes it a unique situation here in Pauling. Um, and um, the, the town and the village contracted the LaBerge group for an interim report. That's what we've been talking about on consolidation uh, to provide an initial look at possible outcomes. And the cost is up to $35,000. Uh, and the hope is the interim report will help residents understand and access the trade-offs on taxes, services, and governance when voting yes or no on November 30th. So hopefully we answered uh, answered that question. And the uh, estimated for, time um, for that report is end of this month. Is end of this month is what I've been what I've heard from a couple of different uh, different people. Uh, and the, I guess the $35,000 is being shared between the village and the town, the village covering one third of that cost and the town covering two thirds. Um, and there is uh, a possibility that the state or the, that the town and village could be reimbursed for this money um, at some point down the road. Right now it's unclear, um, but at some point the village and town will get some reimbursement in the future, but we'll have to wait and see on that. We'll get that money back for the for the study. Okay. All right. How are we doing so far? Um, I mean, I, I mean, oh. we're following through this, um, you know, through this document, going through the, you know, the the Q and A. So. Yeah. I think we're, we're doing. I just want to see if we're not... getting any any kind of questions here or comments or that we need to address right now. Yeah, you want to take a, a second to look. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we've got some comments here. Um, I mean, I, I can't verify the accuracy of these. 
Um, apparently, uh, the full report would take six months to occur next year if the ballot's approved. Um, that's good information. Um, again, the mail-in ballot, um, we don't know the answer to that question about absentee ballots. That has, as of today, that had, yeah, has yet to be determined. Uh, let's see, there is no funding available. Um, okay, uh, according to one source, there's no, no funding available at the moment. Um, so it's possible that that money would come at a later date. Um, you know, the way that the so law is written, it, you know, yeah. it stipulates at 15%. The common is saying that as of now, Correct. there is no, uh, no funding available in the current budget, but as stated in the law, we mm -hmm. would be entitled to that. Yeah. And, uh, one of our super fans, Corinne, um, <laughs> I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning her name. We're, we're really, we're, we don't really want to talk too much about the political uh aspect of of this at this point so we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna touch upon that um that aspect of things um okay uh okay um let me see where we're at here i don't want to lose my place okay we mentioned the interim report would cost up to thirty five thousand dollars all right um okay um, okay, now uh, the the um, actual vote um, for this is November 30th. Um, there was um, a lot of people wondering why uh, this vote couldn't occur on the same day uh, as Election Day, which is November 3rd. And... Um, this is according to the uh, the polling beat. Basically, um, there are uh, two reasons why uh, the petitions were delivered too late, and the uh, uh, and the the Dutchess County Board of Elections said that you uh, just can't do it. They can't get it done by election day, and they even I think the town and village tried to have a separate vote or separate ballot on election day as well, and that uh, didn't work out. Um, so. The next best thing, the, the town and village are, by law, have to have the vote within a certain time period. And they chose to have the vote on the 30th of November. So there you have that. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, couldn't have a separate ballot. So there you go. That hopefully answers that question about why it's not on November 3rd. Can I just uh, interject? There was Please. A follow, there was a follow-up comment that... You know, I made a statement that in the law it is written that we would get 15% credit uh, applicable to, to taxes, tax, right? To property taxes, um, we're we're being um, told that it is that it has to be re that that line item in the budget has to be reapproved every year. Okay. So that is you know um, okay added texture to that, I suppose. Very good. Okay. Glad you I'm glad you brought that up. Um, okay, here's here's um, here's a simple basic question, but one that I wasn't aware of initially. But here's how it goes: the question is, what's required for consolidation to pass? So the way this is going to work is the town and the village will each hold separate elections, and what you need to pass consolidation is a majority of voters voting yes in the village separate and in the town separate. So let's say, for example, the village says no, the town says yes, that means the, the consolidation gets voted down. There has to be a majority of yes votes in both the town and the village, and you only get to vote once. If you're a village member, you vote in the village. If you're not a village member, you vote in the town. One vote, one person, one vote. Um, so that's pretty simple, but very important to know. Um, okay, so we answered that one. Um, okay, we kind of talked about this a little bit um, in, in, in the graph that Sandro showed up, but we just want to reiterate, uh, if there is a yes vote on November 30th, uh, do residents have a, a 
the residents have a chance to, let's say, reverse that, that decision. Um, and there is one way to reverse that decision. That would require uh, a second petition drive and a no vote. And um, you would, in order to get that uh, second petition drive, you would need 25% of registered voters to force a revote. So this is at the, this would be toward the end um, after the consolidation study comes out, the plan the is approved and amended. Out, right, the plan yeah. is generated. It is presented in a public hearing right. to, the, to the voters, to the residents. Right. Um, at that point, if we don't like what we see as, as voters, Mm -hmm. We can generate, you know, a second petition, but it would require 25% of the electorate to sign that petition uh, to hold another vote on that plan. That's correct. And okay. then, um, uh, and then another, and a no vote, then it would require, you know, after that petition, a no vote, and then, then you're done. Um, okay. Um, we talked about New York State maybe paying for the study, maybe not, um, maybe down the road right now, probably not, I would think, but down the road, maybe we would get reimbursed for some of that. I think part of the LaBerge group study will take, um, different options. Like they'll, you'll get zero, you'll get maybe 30% back. Maybe you'll get 70% back. So we'll be waiting for the, uh, report, the interim report to have information on that. And, the, and, and there is more information in the, in the video presentation that they made mm -hmm. back in August, I think that addresses um, some of this. Um, and so it would be good, you know, we'll post again, we will post all of these links on a pinned comment here. So you can, you know, watch that video uh, and get additional texture to you know, to, to some of these questions and, you know, specifically, for example, this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, that's very true. It's, it's, you can see that on the town of Pauling's Facebook page, if you want to go to it now. And this broadcast will also be on Pauling public radio's Facebook page when we're done, Sandro puts it up there. So if you miss something, you can come back to it. Um, and, uh, so we'll, we'll be on there in perpetuity, I guess. Um, Okay, we decided we're not really going to, you know, because it's so subjective, um, we're not necessarily going to discuss the benefits uh, of, of merging the town and the downsides of merging the town and village. But, you know, let's just maybe touch upon a couple things that could be impacted without forming an opinion. Um. So let, let's, you know, let's do that. We know that there have been some shared services already between the village and the town and also the county. Um, so that's been an ongoing thing. So that's, that's, a, that's a plus in my, in my opinion. Um, but we just don't know, um, you know, don't know specifically ab about, ab about certain things. But you can probably... Um, you know, the services that are impacted uh, would include, you know, the, the village has garbage pickup, street cleaning, leaf collection, the town doesn't. Um, you know, zoning laws might change. Um, these are all, these are all what would be considered downsides um, of, of the vote. Um, you know, we're not talking about taxes again because we don't know. Special districts may needed to be may need to be created. Um, so all this stuff we really don't know. So we're not going to speculate on that right now. Um, right. So you know, on on this, yeah. the other, you know, the other, like on on the other side, like there's just a you know some of those things we just need, you know, the report you know, to look through to see where those things are. But the reason why um, this whole thing gets generated uh, is because there is a, and uh, you know, uh, a sort of general sense that there would be efficiencies to be gained in some way. And that's why that, you know, uh -huh. 
you know, would be worth looking into the consolidation. Uh, there are a lot of details, a lot of things that, um, uh, you know, that need to, a lot of line items, a lot of services that need to be looked uh, into thoroughly. And, mm -hmm. um, and those are the things that Mike was referring to that we just don't have the, you know, the answers to what the financial, the fiscal income, I mean, the outcome or impact would be. Uh, but the reason why this happens is that there is a theoretical benefit to, you know, maximizing efficiencies. And that's, um, I think, why this is happening, why, you know, the vote is being, um, is happening on the 30th. All right. Um, okay. We, we, um, we already talked about the 15% taxes from New York state. Um, like you had mentioned, it is written into the consolidation law. Um, but it needs to be funded each year by New York State. And, um, you know, I think it wouldn't be much of an assumption to say that that money's not in there now for this year, but that down the road, um, some of that could could hit the uh, the taxpayer here in Pauling. Um, one question, I guess, that, that's come up uh, is how school taxes would be impacted. And uh, the answer is it will not change school taxes at all um it's a completely different set of it's not property tax school tax so your school taxes are your school taxes they have their own budget we vote on that every year um so there's no there's no impact uh, consolidation would have on school taxes all right I'm just just checking on some combinations. Hello, Gina Shu. If she's still watching. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we here? All right, we're gonna we're gonna. You know, there are some. I, I will say, as Sandro mentioned before, there are some questions. Um, uh, we're not going to be able to get to all the questions uh, that the polling uh, beat provided to us, but we think we've got most of the important ones covered. Um, we're trying to keep this totally informational uh, without a point of view. I uh, hope we're doing a good job of that so far. Um, let's see. All right. Um, what we'll say about what, what, the village and town governments would look like um, if consolidation happens? Uh, the answer is we we don't know, <laughs> right? Uh, is it, am, I, am I right? Is that how, how I'm reading this? Um, really, let me read the question first. Um, setting aside possible tax savings, some people have been clear that they signed a petition to indicate their displeasure with the current elected members of the village or town boards. Will consolidation actually help with that? Will it shape things up? The answer is not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, you know, we'll um, move on. Looks like you got something you want to say, I think. Well, I mean, if the vote is to, is, in the affirmative to consolidate, mm -hmm. um, the the consolidation of administrative functions, right, would probably impact the number of uh, board of trustees and things like that. Now, we don't know to what degree or how what that would look like, right? It would. I think no. the way that we talked about it is that we were going to say that the consolidation will uh, will change the form of our government. We right. Don't know what that will look like correct that's so that that's how you know that's how that's how we you know we were looking at this that it's yes the consolidation will change the form of our government it isn't specifically going to um you know for those folks that were curious you know uh if current elected uh members um will, you know will leave or not leave etc like that does not directly get impacted by this, but the, you know, the form of our government will change, um, right. but we don't right. know 
how, what that would look like. Um, yeah, we both figure there would be, instead of a village government and a town government, there would most likely be just one government running the show, but we don't know how many people would, it's, who knows? So, right. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty, I think you can make that assumption um, that that would be the case. Um, okay. I do want to talk um, about this because I think it's important. It's not necessarily about um, the vote, but it is, it is about the process. And we want to just touch upon the process a little bit. Um, some people have said that they only signed the petition because they were told it was for a study and have asked to have their names removed. Is that possible at this point? The answer is no. Um, once the petition was submitted and validated, which it was, uh, the signatures cannot be removed. Um, I mean, I guess you can go through a court challenge um, to, to have, your, have your name removed, but I, um, I haven't heard anything about that. Um, so uh, just get educated and vote on November 30th, okay? Right, and so in this, you know, this particular, um, uh, you know, this particular point obviously is um, the reason why we decided to, you know, to, to address this is that um, folks, I guess, have, you know, have voiced um, this opinion. Um, However, as a, you know, as it as it stands today, the um, the petition was verified, and there is a, a vote that will be taking place on November the thirtieth. And right. you know, there's, no, there's no more information that that we can provide that is useful at this time because it, you know, yeah, it is happening. It's moving forward. Uh, I'm sorry. There, there, are, you know, folks, you can you can uh, follow the comments along as well. Um, there are folks that are making comments throughout. There is a question, um, Carol uh, asked, do they have a prototype government structure uh, to study or is this mandated? I don't, um, I don't believe that it's been, that it's mandated, uh, that there is a sort of a mandated uh, prototype. prototype that needs to be uh, implemented. I think that is part of what the report and study uh, may, you know, may yield and recommend by, you know, by way of a recommendation for what that might look like. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what you could do, Carol, is, um, you know, Sandro's going to be posting a whole bunch of links. There are case studies. We will include in, in that link. The, yeah, yeah, the email address of uh, uh, Ben, who is doing the study for Pauling from the LaBerge group, and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer that question for you. So we're going to have all that information uh, posted. What, you say at the end of the show at some point? Yes, um, yes. And the reason is that you know we kind of want we're hoping that we can get through the Q and A um, and get this information out there, and have you know have everyone you know kind of follow along here, uh, but then you know afterwards they can you know they can click through uh, and read through some of the stuff that we've gathered. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, got some interesting. Uh quotes there did you see uh did you see lala's comment <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know if that is meant for this particular <laughs> no. chat um no i i i don't think it is i i don't think that's meant for this uh either you're right corin um the consolidation is hard work um there's no denying that there's a um there would be a lot of uh, resources, uh, time and energy uh, that need to go into, you know, into this should the vote um, be a yes to consolidation. Um, and right now, the benefits are not really well understood. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will have an interim report uh, that hopefully will shed some light in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, and then, you know, if the vote is a yes on November the 30th, then we'll have I think six to eight months or so to complete the full report, analysis, recommendations, et cetera. Um, right. Will be um, all studied um, and laid out for us to review. Yeah. Um, a, a couple of other questions that uh, that recently popped up on on Facebook over the weekend um, regarding um, 
village services, garbage, leaf pickup. Um, and we're going to, we don't know the answer to those questions. Um, so we're going to defer, um, you know, Joan, if you're still listening, I think you had a question about that. Um, trash pickup, leaf pickup, um, what's going to happen with those once, if, if the consolidation occurs. So we're going to leave that one as it is for now. Um, maybe you have some answers with the, when the interim report comes out. Um, Let's see here. So it does. What it doesn't mean is that those services go away right away. It doesn't mean that they go away right away. They may stick around, right? Yeah. Um, so no, no. We we just don't know which way the recommendation will you know will go, uh, in terms of streamlining services or you know or what have you. But it doesn't mean that automatically village services go away. Um, yeah. And so let me say like clear. if if there are any. You know, if there are any town uh, town board people or village board people um, who would like to pop in and comment, um, we welcome that. Um, you know, maybe you have some answers for us. Maybe you don't if you are watching or listening. So um, feel free um, to pop in as, as need be. Um, and anybody, you know, else too who might have a some information on this, feel free to comment. All right. Um, all right. So look, um, I'm just thinking, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, we, we answered the question about absentee ballots that's still being worked out. Um, so they suggest that you, uh, look at the, uh, polling beats consolidation information page, um, and, or the, uh, LaBerge group's website, um, to find out about uh, absentee ballots, that should be on there. Um, Ooh, and we have breaking news, Mike. I'm sorry. Um, let's hear it. We just uh, got a message from. Let me just post it from okay. Colleen Farrell. Oh, no, good. That voting will be at Lathrop Building. Ah, beautiful. Thank you, Colleen. So Is at least we have, you know, that uh, new piece of information. We don't know if there will be. Uh, mail-in ballots or anything like that as yet. Now, does she know if there'll be a separate, I guess there'll be a separate voting booth for the village and a separate voting booth for the town, I would assume, if they're going to both be at that same location, that would be good to know if she has that. Okay. Well, if she's listening, maybe she will. She can Yeah. Find. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we appreciate that, Colleen. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, we got a couple of, uh, uh, you know, list of links where people can get information. Um, which, I, which, um, those, those will be included, including the Pauline Beats, um, website. Good, 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 um, good. You know, I'll, I'll post those in there. Um, there will be a contact, um, Ben Seiden at LaBerge, his, uh, you know, his mm -hmm. information, uh, will be posted there. Right. Uh, you can obviously um, post questions here, um, you know, and let us know um, what are some of the things that you'd like to know. What we can do is follow up um, to see if we can, you know, we can dig up some information that we can share with, you know, with you all. Um, can you pop up uh, Colleen's comment? She did answer our question, if you see it So there. what was the question that you asked, Mike? I asked if there would be separate voting booths at the same location yes um there you have it one on each side so that's good and of course we all know how important it is to vote i always tell people this for any election if they really they don't vote they can complain all they want but they really don't have a in my opinion don't have a right to complain unless they vote and be part of the process so we would hope that, um, you know, everybody votes November 3rd and everybody votes November 30th as well. Um, and I think every, I think most of us would share that point of view. Yeah. We have, uh, we have a comment. Let's see. So Carol asked about uh, different prototype government structures. And so, 
Um, it looks like maybe you can look at Mount okay. Pisco or Scarsdale or uh, Patterson or, or Dover um, as, I guess, uh, yeah, so there's a variety examples of, of places you know, that, that have gone through this. But again, we, we will have uh, a link with a bunch of case studies um, that you can review and look, this is a lot of information that, that is available. Um, once you start digging and clicking around and, you know, and looking and, um, you know, and it's a, you know, obviously it's a, it's a highly relevant topic to, you know, to, to folks here in Pauling, uh, both the town and the village. And what we wanted to do was really come at it with as sort of, um, um, uh, un, un, unbiased uh, right. perspective, right? The stuff that that we that we looked into and um, researched further uh, provides a lot of language um, mm -hmm. that yeah. you know that I, we have sort of called down to try to answer some of these questions. Um, we don't have the specifics as yet because the reports aren't available, uh, but they will be available to all of us uh, in. Couple of weeks, couple in, weeks in the interim report, right? Um, so we'll have that before the vote. The interim report will be available before the vote. Does Does Colleen know if that will be that will be mailed to uh, every resident in the town uh, and village? Um, I would assume that, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I I, I do not know. I don't know uh, if Colleen is still on and might know the answer to that. I don't know. Yeah. That would be good to uh, that would be very good to know. Um, okay. Um, hmm. All right. I think we've got everything covered, Sandro. Um, yeah. And there's a comment, you know, encouraging uh, absentee ballots. <laughs> right. Um, so. Right. If you're yeah. a registered voter, you That's can correct. you can apply for an absentee ballot. Yeah, I like to vote in person. That's just me. <clears throat> Here's a a nice comment. Or uh, I want to thank both the village and town clerks prepare for the vote. Yes, I've heard that. Okay, and then um, you know, Colleen also says that she's not sure. Uh, but we'll follow up with the town clerk. Okay. About, you know, about your question. Okay. Very good. There's a question too that I, I don't know if like we can answer. Do people in the hamlet of uh, Holmes vote with town voters? Um, I don't know. I would say yes, but I'm not sure. What was that? Um, if you live in homes, do you vote with town voters? I would say yes, but maybe Colleen could answer that one too. <laughs> so glad she's checked out the show. Yeah, do, I mean, homes is part know, of the town. Typically, the folks from homes vote with uh town of Pauling residents. Yes, they do, she's saying. Okay. Yes, Okay. Don't leave us, Colleen. Stick around until we're done, please. Thank you. Um, there's a comment um, from Joan about uh, village workers and town workers. The yeah, um, Joan. I think that. I mean that we don't have that level of you know specificity. I don't know if we can. Yeah, I kind of we can't answer that. think that's a separate issue. Um, you know, I, it probably should be addressed at some point, but um, I don't know that how the consolidation would affect that. Um, so we'll have to, that might be a question, Joan, if you think there's a kind of a, um, a relationship to the, to the referendum, maybe you can address uh, Ben about that. Um, and see how maybe how that's worked in other towns if they've consolidated do does the village get absorbed by the by the town highway department you know and if so do they join their union don't know 
All right, so Holmes folks do vote in polling, and, and you know, Carol is just asserting that. Yes, Holmes is in polling. <laughs> we thought you were another country, Carol. <laughs> I thought you were part of Patterson. No, just kidding. Yeah. Um, you know, if there, you know, if there are other questions, you know, please put them in. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, you see that response, so we, uh, I will say that, um, that Steve is on the, uh, village, the Steve that, that Joan is referring to is on the, uh, village planning board. Okay. Um, I, I believe he's the president of the village planning board. Okay. Well. So I guess he, he said that if the consolidation happens then they would all need to get on union wage and the same benefits. So I right. guess he answered, he answered Joan separately. Right, which would be a, which would be a good thing, I think. So, um, all right, it's 826. This is your, uh, you are watching and or listening to Sandro and the other guy. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the good looking guy and the bald guy. And um, we got a music guest, don't we? Ready? I'm sure waiting in the wings now. Or yeah, we we do. We have um, you know that basically that you know that concludes the you know the the Q and A um, as provided by the folks at the at the Pauling Beat. So again, we want to thank them for you know for gathering all this information. You know, getting the mm -hmm. questions based on um what people have been asking through social media and in other forums you know around town uh and giving us you know some um basic information to share with everyone uh we will be posting all those links including you know the pauline beats website which is paulingbeats.org uh we'll provide um you know a link to the folks at Burge group the videos and their presentation um from back in August uh, of this year to uh, the town and village of Pauling, um, which I believe you attended, Mike. Right? I did. It was, was, yeah. was a good, so pretty so good turnout. Um, you know, I also, you know, we have the oh. uh, guide to local government dissolution and consolidation under general municipal law, Article 17-A, for anyone that is interested in reading 42 pages worth of that. Um, and then we have some additional resource and info links uh, on consolidation procedures, uh, reforming government, which is a New York.gov website, um, yep. you know, let, cost savings let, ideas, and a bunch of other you know links that, including the case studies that I mentioned. That let let me also talk. say, Sandra, before we before we wrap it up, that there has been um, recently. This was announced at the last board meeting. Um, a new committee, like a consolidation, I don't know what it's, I don't remember the exact words that the supervisor used, but uh, it's going to be a six member committee uh, between the village and the board. Each, each committee will have two board uh, members and a member of the community from the village, two board members and a member of the community from the town of Pauling. And they're going to be the six, it'll be a six person committee to moving forward to discuss, you know, ways to, um, ways to share services and uh, do whatever else they can do. So I think that's probably a pretty positive thing to happen. No, and absolutely. And, I, yeah, uh, and, and, that, and, that, and that's great. I mean, all those things I think are great. Um, you know, what we, what we didn't, what we don't want to do is, um, you know, get into sort of the, the politics of this issue. It's not about who, who is on the board, who isn't on the board, mm -hmm. it, you know, no. it, it really, it really isn't about any of that. I have only, you know, met in passing, you know, some of the folks um, that are elected officials that, you know, I don't really know them um, very well and I don't have any, you know. No, we're, we're, there's no need to go there, you know, no, no need to, to get into that. And th this is, this actually is an issue that has, that has 
cross party lines. It doesn't really matter what side you're on or, or what party you are. So that's. And we want to, you know, we want to thank all of you who've been asking questions throughout and commenting, um, you know, adding to the civil discourse around this issue. Um, so thank you, you know, for that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, social media can get <laughs> a little dicey at times. So I'm, I'm very happy that um, nobody here went there. Um, and thank you, Colleen, uh, for chiming in with, you know, some new information yeah. for us. You know, the building will be in Lathrop uh, mm -hmm. building. Um, and, you know, again, thank you for joining us, Colleen, and providing that and additional information. And she's saying that she will pass more information along as soon as she gets it so that we can share it on our next show and upcoming shows. Very so good. Uh, we thank you for that. I think the more communication that, you know, that we have flowing in the community from, um, uh, from our, you know, officials is, you know, welcome. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So thank yes, you. All right. It's a pleasure to have you. All That's right. Everybody. So with that portion of our show this evening complete, let's head back to the music. <laughs> yes. Don't go away, right. people. Yes. Thank you all for, uh, you know, for tuning into this. And yeah. if you have more questions or more comments, please keep dropping them in and we'll follow up, you know, in the coming weeks on, you know, on this stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Who all do right. we got? So let's, bring, George? let's bring George Malice back on. Hey there. How hey. you doing, guys? Hey, George. Doing well. How are you? Okay. Did you go have a beer? I did. I noticed you weren't listening to us. So <laughs> uh, I was too busy. I was too busy drinking. <laughs> you what kind of beer? <laughs> you know, um, guy, let's see, let's see. I like, I really like the Belgian whites. Oh, me lot. too. Yeah. And, um, but in the refrigerator, I have a bunch of stuff in the refrigerator. And actually, one of my favorite beers, believe it or not, is a, a Mexican beer called Tecate. I don't know if any of you guys have tried that. I, I have. No. I like it. I don't like it in a bottle. I only like it uh, out of the can. Yeah. And, that's, uh, that's put the... a little lime in there, and, you know, it goes down nice and smoothly and, you know, gets you through the rest of the night. Yeah, you know, it's it's not a it's not a like super heavy or it's right. not too light. You know, it's got a little bit of you know, it's got a you know, solid taste to it. Uh, exactly. I do like the you know the Belgian whites. They're a little hoppy though. Um, hmm. But what yeah. I'm you know what I'm finding that I like in beers more these days is the um, like the stouts. Okay. Um, yeah, and my wife turned me on to uh, kombucha. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Melanie drinks that too. I heard that's gross. What does that taste? That <laughs> <laughs> they have different. You know, they have different flavors. Um, it is, I think, supposed to be good for your for your gut. Yeah, I, I think yeah, you're right. I get that too, but I heard it tastes. Like, I always heard beer was good for your gut, but you know. Well, no. beer gives you a gut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, gives you a gut, George. Um, you know that. Yeah. Oops, where'd I go? I don't know. Can you Did see have... me? I see you. You're here. You're on. You're there. What the You're heck? There. Hold on a minute. I got. I don't see you guys. This is weird. Hold on. Well, you're on. We can see you, and we see you. Oh, good. I've got my my screensaver popped up on my computer here. Really now? I did. Let me see if I can find go to where I was before. <laughs> Am I still there? Yeah, you're, right. you're still with us. You're still with us. You're so there. George, what are, in the meantime, while Mike is trying to figure out his technology over there. Yeah, go. Yes, I'm sorry. Let's continue, continue without me. Can we if pull the Mr. Magoo on us tonight? Can we pull Anthony Gatchin? <laughs> Absolutely. Is he ready? There he is. Gatch. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Long hey, time no How see, you kid. How you been? Very well, thank you. Hi, Anthony. Hello. Hello, gentlemen. How nice to meet you. Good to yeah. meet you too. Nice Thanks to meet for doing you, this. Man. Of course. Yeah. You out hunting? You got your uh it looks like you got your camouflage on and you're ready oh, to go. This is my print shirt. <laughs> your print shirt. It looks like camouflage on, on TV. Camouflage. On the computer. 
Hey, I heard you've got a, a new single coming out. Is this uh, true? I actually Word? came out this morning. Ah, so tell us, yeah. tell us about it. Yeah. All right. So the name of the song is uh, Funky or F-U-N-K-Y-W-H-Y with a question mark. Um, <laughs> lyrically, it's about, um, you know, meeting somebody and translating that into music. Um, when you hear music for the first time, it's almost like you know, a relationship, meeting somebody, fall in love at first sight. Um, and that's how uh, I felt when I first started playing funk music. Um, and my singer, she added some additional uh, lyrics to the song. Um, and it's the full band, Harmonic Regression, as George, you know. Um, yep. It's not me on guitar. It's me on trumpet. And I, I'm surrounded by 10 other people in the band. So it's that's, the, that's dynamite. Tell everybody, how many instruments do you play? Or uh, name them. <laughs> guitar and trumpet are, are my main instruments that I'll gig out on. Um, okay. I'll do some work on bass and piano here and there if I'm feeling good or if the money's great. Um, <laughs> um, but I can kind of dabble in, in enough stuff to kind of help yeah. me with the writing process anyway. Absolutely. That's great. So what have you been doing during uh, COVID? Tell us uh, musically what's been going on for you. Well, besides the single, the single is, is, it's actually the second single off the album that'll be coming out in December. Um, so we already released a single in mid-August, I guess it was, um, which is kind of more of a throwback to James Brown. Um, and, cool. Punk. and this whole album is kind of um, a mixture of all the different styles that I've kind of been into lately. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little acoustic stuff on it. I try to get a little country, although... Um, I'm not so successful at it, but that's what makes it original. <laughs> yeah. You know, you try for something and whatever comes out, then it's your something. Yeah. Um, no, that's great. That, but it's all horn headed. Throw awesome. back to James Brown. Um, Dynamite. Um, yeah. And this whole album is kind of. Uh, kind of, I'm sorry? No, I didn't say anything. No, we lost you for a second there. You're back. Oh, all right. Excellent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole. So are you, are you, can you hear us? There you go. I can hear you guys. Yeah. Yeah. We got you. Sweet. Okay. Um, we good? I don't know. I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Um, we were talking about your singles and, uh, and what you've been up to. Any, uh, any gigs going on or. I am playing acoustically with my singer, Katie. Um, we're playing a duet at the, uh, the St. George restaurant in Mohegan. Oh. Yeah. Doing right. that When's that? When, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. When was that? When is Every it? Saturday night we're doing that. Every Saturday. Great. That's dynamite. Wow. It'll be, yeah. uh, I'm not sure how I'll feel about it once it starts moving inside. Now that the weather's getting a little colder. Um, yeah. We're playing out on the patio. And mm -hmm. so far, I've, I've felt comfortable about that. Good. Yeah. When they move people inside, Anthony, are they going to be restricting the uh, numbers or, do you know? I, I would hope so. Uh, right. You know, I understand everybody's got to make money. It's all business, yeah. so you want to uh, get as many people in the door as possible. But I'm sure they're adhering to whatever guidelines they're they're put in place. I don't yeah. uh, tend to tend to worry about their stuff. I worry about myself. Good, I hear you. Yeah, absolutely. Got to stay safe, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to be. We all want to be around for the big comeback when COVID is gone and and we're all out there gigging and having a blast. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be such. A, it's gonna be a great time, you know, when that all comes back. Because people are starving for it, starving yeah. for the music. So. And I can get the full band together in one room again. Yeah. I'm yeah, the apartment's just with my band. Forget about it. <laughs> so so you, you all right, so you have a band and you have not been able to perform together at all? No. Um, I've sporadically seen them on a couple individual bases. We've been recording, so I'll see maybe the horn section at a time. Or then I'll see, you know, maybe just the drummer and the bass player. But as a full band, we have not met. I guess our last gig was end of February. So that was the last right. time we've all been together in the same room. Yeah. Wacky. Yeah. Did you happen to see, I don't know, it's kind of off subject just a little bit, but Chicago put together a video. Uh, I, I believe it was either uh, Feeling Stronger Every Day or one of their big songs where they were playing live on like a Zoom screen with like, you know, eight or nine different, and it sounded great. It was the coolest thing I'd seen in a very long time. Yeah. Well, that thank you for that. So 
I don't yeah. expect them to sound any worse than, than great. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing <laughs> how we've all had to adapt um, our lives and, and our music careers, so to speak. It's, uh, but you know, it's going to get, it's going to get better. We just got to hang in there and, um, you know, be safe and be there when it opens up. So absolutely, I'm ready. That's it. I, I hear you. We, we all are. I mean, the, the only good thing about this I'll say is that, uh, so many musicians that I know, singer songwriters like yourself, it's been a productive time for a lot of us writing and, um, it's mm -hmm. given us uh, a time to be a little introspective and to, you know, write about what's going on out there or, or whatever it is that's going through our heads. So from that point of view, there's been a lot of new music that, that people have been, been writing and you too, all of us. So yeah. it's good to, good to I know. Get so. my lyrics together. I'm not, I'm not a big on lyrics, but I had a lot of time to kill. So I wrote, yeah. I wrote lyrics like for legit reasons for the first time. <laughs> that's uh, great. I what are you going to play us tonight? You got a couple of songs to do for us? I do. Unfortunately, since the album is still being, you know, in the works, I haven't really had the time to take the full band and arrange them into an acoustic setting. Um, so I have some older songs. Um, which okay. You know, yeah, let's fine. hear it, man. Yeah. Uh, the first one is Keep On Singing. You want me to play that one? Play, yeah, play both. Play yeah, both of them. Play two back to back. Belly to belly. Then I'll I'll reverse. What are you going to play us tonight? You got a couple of songs to do for us? And yeah, whichever. Two, unfortunately, since the album. Is yeah, so the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So I haven't really had yeah. the first one is called the game. <laughs> Sam, are we in the Twilight Zone? It's all yours, Anthony. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this song is called Keep On Sing. Oh, 
Yeah, man. That was great. That was really good. That man. was great. That's that's uh, not music to get you ready to go to sleep. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know, right? I'm kind you of know? wishing that it was like a Thursday night right now. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I love it. I love your stuff, man. Appreciate it. Now, that's what kind of beer do you recommend with your music? Beer do I recommend for music? I for usually drink over when I drink beer before I'm even done with the bottle. So I stick with liquor. <laughs> Tell us, uh, tell everybody where they can get your music and website, whatever you have. Lay it on us. Sure. Uh, well, you can buy all the music on iTunes. If you look up Anthony Gatch, G-A-C-H, I'm sure it's somewhere on the screen there. It and is. Harmonic Aggression. Uh, not Harmonic, Harmonic Aggression. And um, Spotify, of course, YouTube, of course. Uh, there's a channel there. Um, but then uh, I have my own page, uh, just Gash, just my last name, and that's kind of an all-encompassing uh, page. It has my acoustic stuff on there, has my cover band stuff, my wedding band, and cor well, corporate gigs, you know, and then as well as my original music, I could filter that in there as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this. Um, it's good we to see do, you man. again, really good and really healthy, good. and absolutely. Mike, apolo yeah, Mike apologizes. He had something something happened at home and uh he was like you know please say goodbye for me i have to go see what's up i i'm actually a little bit concerned, concerned. Yeah. just because he was like out of nowhere like hey i got i gotta i gotta go so so sir okay. he apologizes uh but he was digging your music up you know up until he had to go um if you want anthony you can also just comment on you know on the comment section of this uh of this post and just drop your links man so that people you know can just find you by clicking on those links and they can get your music you know see your uh the release that you had today right yep that's so, great thank you guys and yeah, it's man. always exciting man you know it really is you know you put your hard work in and then you know you want to reap the benefits and and just get the you know the pats on the back yeah you know. the validation exactly validation. exactly you know we do it we do it for ourselves mostly but you know it's nice to get that validation like you said you know absolutely really happy for you thank you so much stay well thank you guys this has been a Be pleasure good, anthony thank you All so right. much man. take See care you. dude thanks that was great man yeah yeah he's um are they're, you know, you know, they're, they're, they're totally different styles, right? Like Sarah and yeah, Anthony. yeah. Um, Sarah will, you know, she'll make you, um, she'll make you think, you know, and make you, uh, you know, evokes uh, an emotion, and he evokes another emotion and happiness, and you know, gets you moving in your chair, you know, bopping around. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah. No, he's yeah, he's cool, cool cat. Yeah. Man. Cool oh cat. yeah, he is. He is a cool cat. So many, so many great musicians in the area, Sandra. We're we're so lucky, and uh, you know, I'm happy to give them a little exposure and on the show and and uh, show off their talent. 
Great. Thanks so for having now, me. We, no, we love it. We love it, man. I don't think this show would be this show if you didn't bring that music. So yeah, that's keep great. it coming, baby. Keep no, it coming. Absolutely. So what room are you in now? You're always in a different I, room. I, I'm down. No, I'm I'm in the music room. I'm back down in the music room. And um, you can see some of the posters in the back. You got a James Taylor, Joni Mitchell stuff going on. Oh, you um, just have it at, at a different angle today. It's just a different angle because of the lights. Yeah. Got it, got you it. Know? And there's your Jackson Brown and Warren Zevon, Lucinda Williams. Yeah, you know? I usually see Jackson Brown behind you. So. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Now you can see them a little bit. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you know, we're putting Melanie and I. We we're getting our equipment together, and you know, we'll be uh, we'll be back performing a little bit online occasionally. So, and when I get it together, I'll 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 come on one night. Nice. So, how was this past Saturday night, man? Oh, it was it was dynamite with Christy. Yeah, because we had. I I told my wife, and I forgot. My son plays tennis, and sometimes he's got tournaments. Yeah, he had he and his tournaments are on Saturdays. They're the weekend, so he had a Saturday tournament, so we couldn't do it. But uh, but it was good. Yeah, it was great. It was at this place called uh, Hogan Cider Mill up in Burlington, Connecticut. I didn't even know there was a Burlington, Connecticut. Uh, but it was great. You know, it used to be um, it used to be an old driving range, so it was pretty cool. They they painted boxes where people would sit it was out all outdoors to keep social distance and they had food and they had cider and drinks and uh christy played through her her whole cd and some other songs too she did a great job she was she nailed it it was just uh the sound was good um i don't remember her missing a note she was she was a pro you know she did she's really, great when she's on with us i can't yeah. imagine she'd be any you know, she's, she's we only got to be better live, you know, you know, we were all so proud of her because, you know, we ran into her, you know, two, three years ago. She wasn't even performing anymore or writing. So we would go up to Hunt Hill Farm up in New Milford on Thursday nights. We did a great open mic up there and she started coming around and saw us and we all got friendly. And then she started doing it again. And then she starts banging out 40 or 50 songs a year. And um, that's when I started getting angry with her because <laughs> I'm like, because <laughs> a good year for me is like four songs, like one a quarter, you know, that's and she was just killing it. She did it. She did a great job. It was really nice to see. She got a good turnout, uh, a lot of friends there and everything. It was it was a really fun night. And the and the cider was great. So, well, there you a go. Good time. There you have it. We had a good time. All right. So, uh, so what do you play? Do you play tennis in the winter time? You go indoors? Yeah, yeah, we go indoors. I mean, my, you know, my son takes uh, his tennis classes. Um, over the summer, it's sort of like on and off. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we might play uh, sporadically ourselves, but he doesn't take classes over the summer. In the winter time, he takes. Uh, you know, he does the classes and then they organize like little tournaments and, and do all this stuff. So uh, we do that with him and, and I play indoors every so often. I just realized that um, before you used to have to pay for, you know, for a membership. But mm -hmm. I think they're not doing sort of annual memberships at the clubs anymore. They're kind of going like they're renting courts ad hoc. So okay um, maybe that'll be an opportunity to play some more um mm -hmm. but um yeah we try to get it in as much as possible you know That's just good. it's good exercise and yeah. i was telling mike the other day like there's a the gym here in pauling next to hanniford over yeah, by mt bank yeah um so i've been going there with my dad so we're doing a little bit of exercise you know the machines there and it's That's interesting because like now you're in the gym and it's not like i've ever been really like a gym goer but um now you know i started to go with my dad and like everybody's got the masks on and so when you're doing like when you're on the treadmill or something like you've got the mask on it's like it's extra hard to <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> to run. um so no doubt about that yeah, yeah. so so that's it, been interesting but you know but we're out there uh getting some exercise that way as well that's great that's yeah, great it takes discipline cool. it really does to 
to get there and and do it. He gets uh, once you get into it, you know, it just becomes part of your routine, and you go and you and yeah, you enjoy yeah, it. That's what you try to. That's what you try to build. You know, and my wife is doing a lot of research on. I think it's candida. Um, hmm. So it's like this, uh, like this uh, bad bacteria. I mean. I guess it's not necessarily bad bacteria, but when you have an overgrowth of candida in your guts, then that's bad, right? When okay. there's too much of it. And so um, it causes all kinds of problems, inc including thyroid problems. So she's been reading a lot about that stuff. And so it looks like, you know, in a couple of weeks, like she wants to get through like a bunch of the stuff that we have here in the fridge and stuff. So when we're done with that, it looks like, you know, I'm going to have a tough three three months coming up <laughs> she's like that's it raw you know raw food you're gonna eat like greens and vegetables and you know like no sweets no carbs no nothing <laughs> no fun <laughs> right yeah exactly you know it's hey gonna... you know you may you may get into it um yeah no you know, it's... you can have proteins so I'm, I'm oh yeah you, you gotta I have protein you gotta yeah, have so... protein yeah, well, it's so, great uh, you're working out with your dad. It's just that's very special, you know. Yeah, you know, I never, I never thought, uh, I never thought that that would be an activity that we would engage in, you know. Um, and so, we just, it's kind of, kind of an interesting, you know, little side bit. Like my, you know, my son started doing cross country in, you know, in, uh, in high school, so he had to miss his cross country practice on Friday. So I told the coach that I would bring him to do it on Saturday, that he would do the course and do the practice. Sure. So to motivate him, I was like, okay, you know, I'll do it. Cause I was kind of interested to see what the cross country course looks like. Right. So I did it with him. So I did that with him. And then we went hiking, you know, afterwards in the afternoon with his friend and my wife, like we went hiking. And then I had promised my dad that we would go, you know, do the treadmill for 40 minutes. <laughs> so then I, when I got home, like, I, you know, I rested for, you know, two hours or whatever. Then I called him and I was like, okay, you still want to go? I was like hoping that he would do it. <laughs> he say no. He goes, he goes, okay, let's do it. You know, so I was like, okay. Uh, okay. So like by the time I was done, like my legs from Saturday, like they're still sore. Like, I Oh, just, I'm not surprised. How was the cross country course? You know, it's real. it was, uh, it was, is really, it a 5k or something or? Um, no, I don't, I mean, we didn't do the full, you know, the full course, like he's, um, he started, he's practicing, it's probably like two miles. Okay. Um, what, you know, what we did. Um, but they actually, so that was all within the school. But then I know that he said that they, some kids go out of the school and then they turn up on reservoir road, they go okay. up to another road and then, you know, draw yeah. on another street and stuff that that's part of the actual the full course so we didn't do all that he's he's a freshman so he and this is his first year so he's just sort of like getting used to it they're actually oh, yeah. not doing competitions it's more mm -hmm. like skills and training so it's not like you're getting together with other schools and doing competitions it's you're just going through you know the practice and the training right um and then hopefully when things you know get back to normal and they'll start to do some competitions with other schools as well. Yeah. 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 It seems like, um, you know, I go probably, I probably run three, four, eh, at least three, four times a week. So I go over to the, the track occasionally over in North Salem, which I'm, I'm right near and I'm very friendly with the, the varsity soccer coach over there. So they've been having practices now and they're getting ready um, they're getting ready for, I guess, a short season is what it comes down to. Okay. They're going to be starting soon. So it's, uh, I'm glad to see that's going on. And, um, I don't know if they're going to play with masks or not. Uh, they're, pra the kids are practicing with masks on. Okay. So I guess you can, I guess you can play with a mask on uh, as long as I guess it's not too heavy. Right. They know. also have like the, like the sport friendly ones or like the ones that you pull up over your neck, like right, they that right, those right. aren't as advisable, but they're, you know, they're more breathable. So I guess there are right. some masks that are more, you know, that are easier to breathe. Hey, yeah. Corinne saying that Lakeside has cross country trials. Thank you, Corinne. We'll have to That's check. That's great. That out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it was a pretty, uh, 
You had a, you <laughs> had a, a very busy Saturday. Me. There's a whole lot of running for me. Uh, <laughs> may not be a whole lot of running for like somebody who's accustomed to it. <laughs> yeah, you know, now we're getting into the colder weather, and I, I you know, I have a treadmill and a, a recumbent bike in our exercise room, but it's, I hate it. I hate it. I want to be outside and run and whatever. But yeah, and I was telling, I was telling my son that I was impressed with his, uh, you know, with his training because he, he's never done it before. Like he's never, you know, gone out and jogged or, you know, done anything. And so he's only gotten, I don't know, maybe two weeks of this, you know, he's into this for two weeks. So, you know, I thought he did a relatively decent pace and it's great. I was noticing that he, you know, he's just kind of getting into it. So I was kind of impressed with, uh, uh, with his running ability. I, I didn't, I didn't think, I thought that he might run for like two minutes and then walk and then <laughs> do another two minutes and then walk. But yeah, you know, it's, it's great for his psyche and for his confidence and all that stuff. And, and you feel better, you know, you start realizing what you can do when you're, when you're pushed. Right. You know? And that's, yep. that's the good thing about being coached and, and, and being on a team and doing that stuff. You can't, you can't push yourself the way somebody else can push you, you know? It's, yeah. It's or like just giving you that, you know, that little, uh, yeah. you know, pat on the back or that reinforcement that, you know, kind of, yeah, yeah so that's really absolutely. Cool. Have you uh, have you tried paddle tennis at all in the winter time? You know, no, I haven't. A friend of mine swears by it. She loves it. She competes. Yeah, you know, she's out of Westchester. Uh -huh. uh, but up here, I really haven't seen many paddle tennis courts. In Westchester, there there's a bunch. Yeah, there but are. Up here I, in haven't Texas, I haven't found them. Yeah, I haven't either. I haven't seen them around. Yeah, it's a cool I game, fun game. Yeah, yeah, no. Because you play off the court, like off the walls and everything. Yeah, right? it's a it's a chicken chicken wire or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. A lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, good. All right. Well, Mr. Malice, thank you very much. Thank you for always you know, a pleasure helping out the show with me here. Um, you know, I gotta I gotta see how Mike is doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me know if everything's I'll, okay. I'll keep you posted. All thank right, you. everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We'll Absolutely. see you again next week. Sounds good. Take care. Have a great week. Bye, George. Take care. You too. Bye, Sandra. Bye -bye.